Hello and welcome to the session in which we will start chapter 8. Chapter 8 is about stock valuation. Now in the prior chapter we took we looked at bonds and what did we do is we find the price of the bond and how did we find the price of the bond? Here's what we did with the price of the bond. To find the price of the bond what we did is we took the uh, payments or the coupon payments that the bond makes and we discount them. Then we took the principal amount of the debt, then we discount. Remember this was a, an annuity and this was a single payment. And remember we used the market rate to use in the denominator when we're discounting. So this is a bond. So the bond is pretty simple. Why it's simple? Well, simple relative to stocks because bonds, you know, the payments and you know when you're getting the payments and you know when you're getting your principal amount. So you know, you know this information. All we have to do is determine the market rate, which is not very difficult to determine, or you could assume a fair market value, the fair market rate and find the price of the bond. This is when it comes to bonds. When it comes to stocks, it's a little bit more difficult. Okay, why? Common stock don't even promise cash flow. So for, for one thing, bonds, they promise a cash flow. Remember the bond, we have a cash payments every six months or every year. So for cash, there is no promise of cash flow. That's one. Two, the life of the investment is essentially forever. But stocks don't mature. So they don't they don't come due. So there's, it's forever. And third, there's no way to easily observe the rate of return that the market requires. Bonds are a little bit easier because you're using the interest rate. So the interest rate, the general interest rate is usually known. When it comes to stocks, it depends on your industry. It depends on your uh, economic environment. It depends on your competitive advantage in the market. So the rate of return is very difficult to predict. Okay. But although we have those three difficulties, we still going to try to find a way to do what? To value a stock. Okay. There are cases in which we can come up with the present value of the future cash flow for the share of stock and thus determine its value. So we're going to try to find formulas or ways, acceptable methods that's going to help us value the stock. Now what we're going to be assuming, we're going to be assuming we're going to have a cash flow. In other words, what is the cash flow from a stock? It's called dividend. Stocks pay dividends. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at some, start with some simple example to illustrate the point. Then we will expand our, ex expand our explanation. Okay. So let's start with this simple example and expand on it. Okay, let's assume you are considering buying a share of stock today. So that's the assumption. And you plan to sell it one year from today. Say you want to hold it for one year. You know somehow that the stock will be worth $70. That's really good that you know it. But we're going to make this assumption that you know the stock price. You predict that the stock will also pay $10 in dividend. So here's what we're saying. We're saying one year from now, you can sell the stock for $70. Plus this stock, it's going to give you $10 in dividend. So the stock will pay dividend and you'll be able to sell the stock for $70. This is what's going to happen one year from today. Now, if you require a 25% uh, return on your investment, which is, this is your rate of return. What is the most you would pay for this stock? Well, simply put, in other words, what is the present value of the $10 and what's the present value of the $70. Well, basically you're going to be getting $80, 70 plus 10 equal to 80. And what you do is you discount them based on 1.25 raised to the first power. This is how to find the price of the bond. And what you do, if you take $80 divided by 1.25, you're going to get exactly $64. So you will pay for this stock $64 and the stock uh, and a year from today, you would receive the $10 and you would receive the $70 and you would earn exactly 25%. Therefore, this is the value of the stock. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, let's see. 
Well, what we can say is, based on this formula, what we can say, let's, let's more generally let P0, P0, the price today, and assign P1, the price in the future, and D1 is the future dividend. This is not D0. The dividend is for the future. So this is D1 is the future. Okay, the dividend. What we can say is, what we can say is D1, which is the future dividend, a period from now, plus P1 divided 1 plus R. And this is exactly the formula right here, which is the future dividend plus the future price divided by 1 plus the rate of return, where R is the required rate of return. Okay, now, if you notice, we're basically going from one issue to the other. We really haven't said much so far. If we wanted to determine the value of the share of the price today, we would first have to come up with the price one year from today. Well, we're coming up with the price of one year from today, but how, how are we coming up with that one, one, one year from today price? How did we come up with the $70, right? We just said we're going to sell it for $70. Now, the dividend might be known. The company might say I'm going to pay dividend, but how do I know that the price is $70? Well, how do I find P1? Okay, so, well, P1, I would use the same formula that I used earlier. We don't know. We don't know in general. Instead, suppose we somehow know the price in P2. So let's find if we know the price in P2. Well, P1, using the same formula that we did earlier, using the same formula, equal to D2, the future dividend, plus P2, the price year from P1, divided by 1 plus R. Well, that's simple. Well, what we can say is, then P0, okay, if we are to substitute this expression for P1, okay, we could say P0, now what we're doing is, all we're doing is substitution, equal to D1 plus P1, divided by 1 plus R equal to D1 plus D2 plus P2 over 1 plus R all divided by 1 plus 1 plus R. Or another way to, again, the same thing as saying D1 divided by 1 plus R raised to the first power, D2 equal to 1 plus R raised to the second power plus P2 1 plus R raised to the second power. All we're doing is we substitute in the formula P1. Okay, and what's P1? It's right here. This is P1. That's all what we did. Okay, so this is P1, because remember, this is P1, and this is the, what we did is we substituted the formula for P1. That's all what we did. Then we basically simplify it, so we say it's D1 plus D2. So notice what we're doing is we're discounting the dividend. We are discounting the dividend one period from now. We're discounting the dividend two periods from now. Then we're discounting the price two years from now okay now we get now we get the price in two periods but we don't know this either so we can procrastinate again and write p2 okay what is p2 now because we don't know p2 what is p2 okay p2 is equal to d3 plus p3 plus uh, divided by one plus the rate of return again what can we do we can substitute for p3 so let's do this. So now we're up to P2. And what we do is this P2 here, we can replace it with this formula. And what we do is to find P0, it's the future dividend um, discounted one period from now, the D1, D2, two years from now dividend discounted at uh, the rate of return two years from now, P2, discounted 1 plus R. Again, what can we do with P2? For P2, we could replace it with this formula. Then, then we replace P2 with the formula, which is D3 plus P3 divided by 1 plus R, all divided by 1 plus R raised to the second power. Then what we can say is, then we the formula goes down to, we discount the dividend one period from now, the two-year dividend discounted two years two years from now, and D3 three years from now, then we discount the price three, the period three, divided by one plus R. But hold on a second. What is P3? Again, P3 is equal to what? Can you guess what P3 equal to? Well, P3 equal to what? Equal to uh, uh, D4 plus... Uh, price 4 
year from today divided by 1 plus r. Then for P3, we can substitute, then work the process again. Then what is P4? Then what is P5? Okay, now, so you should start to notice that we can push this problem to coming up with the stock price into the future forever. Notice, no matter what the stock price is, the present value is essentially zero. If we push the sale of the stock far enough away, well, that's what it is. What we are, even, what we are eventually left with is the result that the current price of the stock can be written as the present value of the dividend beginning one period from now. Because remember, if we keep on discounting this, if we keep on discounting this forever, okay, what we eventually left with is the price, is the current price of the stock is at the present value of the dividend. So we can say the price of the stock P0 equal to D1 plus 1 plus R raised to the first power, the future dividend, which is two years from now, two years from now raised to the second power, dividend three raised to the third power, dividend four raised to the fourth power discounted at the market rate. We have illustrated here that the price of the stock today equal to the present value of all future dividend. How many future dividend are there? In principle, there can be an infinite because the stock is, will survive forever. That's the assumption. And the dividend, as long as it pays dividend, the future cash flow is forever. This means that we still cannot compute the value of the stock because we would have to forecast an infinite number of dividend. Then we discount them. In the next session, we consider some special cases in which we can get around this problem. So what we have to understand is basically what we end up with, the, the price of the stock equal to the future dividend raised, uh, discounted, at the future rate, D1, D2, 1 plus R raised to the second power, basically forever. Well, what we can say, we're gonna look at special cases and we're gonna, in this session, we're only gonna discuss the zero growth example. So, in few special circumstances, we can come up with the value of the stock. What we have to do is to make simplifying assumptions about the pattern of future dividend. Three cases, are the following for, with dividend. So the dividend have a zero growth rate. Basically, the dividend is the same, basically. Or the dividend grows at a constant rate. It grows, but the, the rate of the rate of dividend is the same. Or the third the third situation, the dividend grow at a constant rate after some length of time. So the dividend will grow, but not right now, after a length of time. So we will consider all three situations. The first situation we're going to start with is the zero growth rate, and I will cover this topic now then we're going to cover the two other situation which is the dividend growth at a constant rate and the dividend growth at a constant rate after some length of time so zero growth we kind of we kind of looked at the zero growth we didn't call it but the case for zero growth is one way we already seen a share of common stock in a company with a constant dividend is much it's much like a preferred stock we know that the dividend on a share of preferred stock has a zero growth and thus constant throughout time for a zero growth share of common stock, so if it's the same dividend forever, D1 equal to D2 equal to D3 equal to D, which is constant, the dividend is constant, but we can say P0, every time we want to find the price of the stock, we take the future dividend divided by 1 plus the rate of return raised to the period in which we are receiving the dividend, discounted at that period. Because the dividend is always the same, the stock can be viewed as an ordinary perpetuity. And we already saw this in the preferred stock with the cash flow equal to D every period. So the value of the stock P0, if it's a zero growth rate, a zero growth dividend is equal to the dividend divided by R. That's it, dividend divided by capital R. We wanna make sure we're consistent. Okay, so where R is the required rate of return. For example, suppose Paradise Prototyping Company has a policy of paying $10 per year dividend for every year. So that's D, D equal to $10. And definitely, what's the value of the stock if the required rate of return is 20%? If you'd like to earn 20% on this, on this company, well, you would pay $50 for the stock. And this stock will pay forever $10 per share. That's the dividend. So this is how you come up with a stock that we assume that the dividend is constant. It's basically zero growth. Constant means zero growth. It's not going to grow. So it's very simple. We're using the ordinary perpetuity formula, which is dividend divided by the real rate of return. The next, in the next session, we'd look at where dividend has a constant growth. 
okay suppose we know that the dividend for some company always grow at a steady rate okay basically the dividend every year grows at three four five percent now how do you find the price of the stock well we're gonna we'll we'll take a look at this uh, discussion in the next session so basically make sure to know the basic idea of how to discount future dividend at the present value to find the price of the stock if you have any questions any comments by all means email me